little cartoon here. Word to the wise Harry at this morning's meeting, you referred to as the bottleneck. So we're going to talk about bottlenecks and bottlenecking and what exactly is that. So what is a bottleneck? A bottleneck, if you've never heard the uh, statement before, is the point that limits or restricts movement. So in a bottle, if you're pouring out uh, something from a bottle, that bottleneck restricts how fast it can come out. If you're pulling out, pouring out of a mason jar, it will just go bunk and come right out, right? There is no bottleneck. It's all the same size. But a bottleneck is the thing that limits the flow of something in or out of something. So bottlenecking exists in computers. And specifically, it exists on the motherboard. The motherboard is never, unless you really make a bad purchase, as fast as the CPU. This is an example of these numbers that I have here. We know that motherboards sync up with the fastest non-overclocked memory of a, of a uh, system RAM. So I've got a fast system RAM here. I put down 2666 megahertz, which is the fastest that most of your motherboards went to. Uh, on a normal basis, there's a couple, a couple that were like 2800. There's one that was 3200 megahertz, not overclocked, but in general, 2666 and 2400 are, are really fast. Um, so think about that's how fast information channels around the motherboard uh, and how fast memory can be read and, and written to. And then think about the speed of the CPU. We saw them all the way up to 5100 when we talked about uh, the chart showing that. I just wrote 4, 4 gigahertz. And if you don't remember, 4 gigahertz equals 4,000 megahertz. CPUs processing at 4,000 megahertz. Motherboard and memory are processing at 2,666 megahertz, which is one of the reasons CPU cache becomes really important. The more bottleneck, the more a bottleneck exists on your motherboard to your memory, the more the CPU cache becomes important because the less it has to go through the motherboard to that system RAM. You know, it's trying to whoop, trying to get up here to the system RAM from the CPU, uh, and if it doesn't have to do that, it's going to perform faster. So the motherboard bottleneck is that ratio between memory and CPU. It's why we want more cache on the CPU, because then we don't have to go through the motherboard as much. still going to go there, right? But the less it has to do that during computations, the better. There's a chart here that I'm going to open. And it's in your reading on the section. It's the PC bottleneck calculator. And with this calculator, we can put in the CPU, the GPU, uh, and say what kind of bottleneck exists. This one in particular is between the CPU and the video card. So for instance, let's say I'm going to use a, oh, I don't the 9920X, very high-end, well-rated uh, gaming CPU. Uh, and I'm going to put it with a GeForce RTX 2060. I'm going to say 2060. Let's see if it finds there we go. GPX 2060. Uh, RAM memory, sure, 8, GPU count, no, calculate. Did I get that? I'm being impatient and spinning there, right there. Average bottleneck percent is 9% bottleneck. That's actually pretty good. The lower that percent is, the better. So that GPU is doing pretty good. The it says the results are based on the average CPU and GPU use different programs, blah, blah, blah. So the higher that bottleneck is, the worse performance you're going to get between your uh, existing system. Let's put it all up to 4K and see what it says. Now it's up to 12%. Your graphic card is too weak for this processor on 4K resolution. No. What about 1440? No. We gotta we gotta stay on 1080p. Graphic card and processor will work together in 1080p resolution. Um, that's just one example of bottlenecking. I thought I'd throw that out there, and that's because again that information has to go between the CPU through the motherboard 
to the video card, the video card's gonna be able to process the video and put it back out, all that good stuff. So there's all kinds of things that can affect our overall speed. But, and that's important to, to look at the, the button, motherboard bottleneck, we've got GPU bottleneck, how fast does the information from the CPU get out to the other things? And all those bottlenecks are why things like cores and cache and gigahertz are together all important to determine the overall speed and performance of a CPU.